Welcome everybody, my name is Doragon and this is Google Stadia. Stadia is a streaming service for video games from one of the world's biggest technological companies. The service has now been out for eight months and I've been using it for the past two as my primary AAA gaming platform. I signed up after seeing a news article at the beginning of lockdown that stated Google were now making their premium edition free for two months to everybody. Now that those two months have come to an end for myself, this is my review of Google Stadia and its services. So let's start with what is Stadia. To my eyes, Stadia has a multifaceted approach. They want to replace your current gaming hardware. They want to bring AAA gaming to the masses for a cheaper cost. And they want you to be able to play anywhere. The service leverages Google's data centers to stream games directly to your internet browser or app. Through my experience, that browser can be on any internet connected device if the app is not fully supported. It offers quality of up to 4K HDR content and runs all games, if supported, at 60 frames per second. Now this all sounds really good as a starting point, but how does that ambition translate to real world usage? I would say that most of my time with Stadia has been spent in Destiny 2. As many of you know from this channel already, Destiny 2 is one of my staple games. My first experience on Stadia was absolutely wonderful. You can actually see that first experience on this channel in the video titled I Play Destiny 2 on my phone. To suddenly have the ability to play AAA titles on my phone wherever I wanted for the first time was mind blowing. I was able to dive into Destiny at a time that suited myself without interrupting anybody else in my house and play the new bunker that had just been unlocked. Because I have one of the latest phones, I was also able to record and edit this in a better way than I could from the content that I tend to capture on my PlayStation. For those that don't know, I capture and edit everything on the device that it's played on. My first impressions of the service were incredibly strong. First impressions mean a lot. First impressions are what keep you coming back, waiting for something to improve because you really like what you initially saw. And for me, two months ago, Google really nailed that mark. Over the course of the next two months, I played multiple different games and those first impressions have not really been pushed aside. If anything, those first impressions have been reinforced and I now realize how great Google Stadia and cloud gaming services can be as a whole. Now that's not to say that the service is perfect. In fact, at this precise moment in time, I would say it's far from. But let's start off with the positives. Through my testing, there are very few devices that this service will not work on. While I can't do it through the app on my tablet, if I load Google Chrome, I can play the games through the browser. My phone can do it natively through the app, same with my TV. The only real limitation in the devices that I own were older Chromecasts that don't support 4K. And to Google's credit, they say explicitly on their site that this is the case. Most of your gameplay experience is going to come from the games themselves. So that's not a Stadia situation, that's a developer situation. But when you are playing something with incredibly tight and fluid controls such as Destiny 2, I've noticed no input lag, no difference between console and Stadia. And because of the improved frame rates and load times, the game feels smoother, faster, and better than it ever has before. NBA 2K20 was a dream to play. It was highly responsive and the quintessential 2K sports experience. And Grid 2 allowed those twitch reactions, correcting the slide, switchbacks to overtake. No input lag at all. Stadia also has this seamless screen switch. Say for example, I start playing on a computer browser. Yeah, it might be a laptop and it's running out of battery. I may have to go find a socket to plug it in and leave it there out of a comfortable game spot. Or I have to go out somewhere and want to continue playing whilst on public transport. All I have to do is boot up the app on my phone, start the game there, and the progress automatically jumps from the computer screen to my mobile screen. And I continue from the exact point that I left off. This implementation of the streamed experience is excellent. 
with only the odd minor hiccup of a drop frame here and the out of sync audio there. The technological prowess to achieve this is nothing short of amazing and Google should be commended for their actions on this. It's a huge triumph in the first step toward video game streaming and when compared to competitors like PlayStation Now and Xbox Game Streaming, it stands head and shoulders above these options in terms of ability and stability. So why are so many news outlets reporting that Stadia is a failure? Well, it comes down to its only two negatives. Number one, internet connection. And number two, games. I've not noticed any problem with the service during my use. Whenever I wanted to use it, it's been available. Stability has been exceptional. And it's no different to my console experience generally. But I live in the UK. I live in a newly built property and I have fiber to the home broadband, meaning that my average speed is around 220 megabits per second. For the UK, superfast broadband is classified as 75 megabits per second. So I get three times what is classed as super fast. I have friends and colleagues, however, that only get 17 megabits per second. And that is the maximum that their house can achieve because the UK's infrastructure does not allow fiber optic broadband nationwide. We're still using those same copper wires that we used to make phone calls back in the 50s. They've just been repurposed. Whilst those speeds just about allow 4K video streaming from the likes of Netflix and Amazon, with more data intensive tasks such as video game streaming, constantly sending and receiving data, then you start to notice Stadia's tripping up. Internet is a quintessential component for Google Stadia to work. With so many UK homes not having super fast broadband, Stadia doesn't have a foothold within the UK simply because of the manner that it has been designed. In this day and age where we can get one gigabit per second broadband to the home, the UK is still lagging behind. If most homes can only just get 4K video streaming, they don't particularly have the bandwidth to play a single player game streamed let alone a persistent online game like Destiny 2. These households have even less ability if there's more than one person living there and the internet bandwidth needs to be shared amongst them all. Now I know each person's experience of Google Stadia is going to be so intrinsically linked to their broadband connection that it's no small part of the consideration on whether or not to use it. For me, with this massively fast broadband, and with 5G in my local area that operates just as quick as that home broadband, Stadia is very nearly a no-brainer at this point. For the vast majority of the British populace, however, Stadia's current ability just makes no sense. Instead, they can have a box that sits under their TV, downloads the game data for them in the background, and then it is there when they need it, internet connection or not. They can play the game at full speed, no questions asked, in the comfort of their own home. Now that's not Stadia's fault. In more technologically advanced countries, the likes of South Korea and Japan, internet isn't an issue. It's free almost everywhere that you go and it's a great speed. It's more the Western democracies that are gonna struggle with internet. The likes of the UK, the USA, Australia and co. They're all so far behind with their top technological advancements that it's gonna impact people like Stadia. So it explains some of the negative press, but it's a scenario beyond Google's control. And it's going to be a scenario beyond every game streaming services control that they're all at some point, somehow going to have to overcome. We are at a point where the established gaming companies are coming towards the end of their current generational platforms. Because of this simple fact, they have a huge back catalogue of games available, either physically or digitally. And up until the release of the new hardware, they will still be releasing new software. Nintendo, whose hardware is less than half of the age of their competition, have a huge stable of available games for the Switch. This is what allows the big three to keep dominating the gaming sphere. Xbox are always going to launch a new Halo game, and people will buy a console for that. PlayStation will have the next God of War and Spider-Man, and people will buy consoles for that. The Switch is so strong right now that it doesn't need a game to sell it. The hardware is enough. And they aren't going to need to release more hardware for 
quite a while because the Switch does everything people want it to. As of this moment, however, Stadia does not have that stable of games. They have no first-party games, no exclusives, and the third-party support is sadly lacking. If you look through the Stadia store at this precise moment in time, you will see a very small selection of games. You'll see some divisions like Top Trending, Most Played, and all of them have between four and six titles within the stack. If you go to the PSN right now and look at the Most Played, you'll be trawling through for days to be able to see everything. And that is part of Stadia's weakness. But the other side, the other part of that weakness, that comes from cost. As you may have gathered, Stadia is a digital-only platform, which means there's no physical discs, cartridges, or anything to input to play a game. You log in, choose what you want, and start playing. You don't have anything in hand. It sounds great, until it comes to buying these games. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is one of the marquee games on the Stadia platform, but this came out in 2018, nearly two years ago at this point, and it is still costing $54.99 on the Stadia store. That's a full price entry point, and that isn't for all of the DLC, either. Now, to be fair to Google, if you jump over to the PlayStation Network, Assassin's Creed Odyssey costs exactly the same as on Stadia. $54.99, and this again is for the base version of the game. But this, this is where traditional consoles right now take a bit of a lead. If you go over to Amazon, a brand new physical version of Assassin's Creed Odyssey for PlayStation 4 is £20 and 44 pence. Less than half the price of the two digital versions offered from either Google or Sony for exactly the same game. From a consumer perspective, consoles that take physical media just make more sense. Because a year, six months, two years, some point down the line, the price is going to decrease. You can pick up really good second-hand versions of games. And this is what anybody who wants to move into this game streaming service is going to have to figure out. Prices of games, availability of games, compatibility of games. If you want to make a cloud gaming service, Games are your primary concern. Quantity, quality, cost. You get those things right, it doesn't matter what else happens, it will all fall into place. So what are my closing thoughts on Stadia? What is my review score, if you will? For someone like me, who has good availability of internet, who has $8.99 a month, maybe, for the pro version. Stadia is an excellent shout. It accompanies your existing setups really well. And it means you're not forking out for yet another gaming system. But I'm not going to jump the gun at this precise moment. When this trial ends... For me, that's it for the moment. I will keep very close eyes on it because after this trial, I have seen how good this service has the ability to be. But it needs to sort out its catalog first before it gets me to pay for it month on month. If Google can do that, if they can bring developers on board, if they can strike up a deal with the existing Big three, for example, can you imagine if anybody can play Pokemon or Mario on any device? If they can pick up a phone and play Uncharted on the bus? 
If Google can get these minor niggles sorted and bring people on board to create the content for people to see, use, and play, I think we've got something really good on our hands. They will also need to stop over-promising. There are so many features that were promised at E3 last year that just aren't there, and it's been out for eight months now. But this has so much promise, and I so hope that they can deliver on it. Because if they can, gaming's going to change for the better for everyone. I'd like to thank you all very much for tuning in. If you like the video, hit that like button, tap subscribe. My name is Doragon, and until next time, take care. <laughs>